Welcome to Total War News. Before we cover what's in the Shadows of Change DLC, let's watch the trailer. The Shadows of Change DLC for Total War Warhammer 3 will arrive on August 31st as part of Update 4.0. It will feature three legendary lords, a legendary hero, 12 units, and the price has been confirmed as 25 US dollars, 25 euros, and 20 pounds. Though this is a marked price increase over DLCs of a similar format from Warhammer 2, it does follow the new style introduced in Warhammer 3. Included in the Shadows of Change DLC are the Changeling Lord for Zinch, the Jade Dragon Yuan Bo for Grand Cathay, and Mother Ostankia for Kislev, along with the legendary hero, the Blue Scribes of Zinch. The three starting lords will be accompanied by new campaign mechanics, which we'll detail shortly. To start with, we'll go over Zinch's trickster, the Changeling. The Changeling is a master infiltrator who wears many faces. Raising cults and settlements to manipulate them in service of his schemes, he uses impersonation, audacious pranks, and trickery to erode alliances and fuel conflict, such as tipping the iconic Elector Counts into civil war and collapsing the Empire from within. For mechanics, the Xenchian Nightmare doesn't seek to conquer the map, only to create opportunities for his schemes to succeed. His schemes mechanic has minor schemes, which include building cults within enemy cities, which escalate to grand schemes that can include manipulating characters into attacking each other. Both are stepping stones to the final execution of the ultimate scheme, one final insidious plot to sow total discord and secure victory in the Lord of Change's name. An unlockable legendary hero will also be included as a paid part of the DLC, the Blue Scribes. Riding atop their Disc of Zinch, the Blue Scribes are a pair of powerful blue horrors, Pizarix and Zyrtep. They soar across the mortal and eternal realms, squaggling amongst themselves as they locate fragments of Zinch and bind them in parchment. With a quill in each hand, equipped from Zinch's own feathers, Pitarix scrawls with abandon before passing it off to Zyartip, which I should note is Pitarix backwards, who reads the words aloud to check their accuracy, unleashing devastating spells directly from the Lord of Change. Often drawn into battle while searching for hotspots of powerful and destructive magic, the Blue Scribes may face many dangers. When threatened, Zyartip will read spells at random, trusting his true master to guide his hand towards the correct magic scroll for the occasion. Though Zinch is never truly random, the results can be spectacular, unpredictable, and bizarre. As frankly a wacky caster, this legendary hero grows in power as spells are cast around them thanks to their spell siphon passive. Meanwhile, their innate ability, Scrolls of Sorcery, grants a random selection of spells at the start of the battle. These are shuffled and randomized whenever a new spell is cast. 
For new units joining Zinch, we have the Zangors. Drawn to magic just like the blue scribes before them, Zangors are unnatural beastmen now serving the Lord of Change. Their animalistic savagery combines with their keen and cruel intellect. With axes of bone, iron, or crystal at their side, the Zangors are the perfect fast flankers, utilize their innate vanguard deployment to quickly get to the action, increase their weapon strength with arcane charge, or increase their weapon death strength with arcane charge when in the vicinity of magic, or just retreat into the woods to stalk the enemy before striking once more. The Cockatrice is seldom found beyond its lair, but it is an unsettling avian beast tainted by the forces of chaos. Cockatrices are known to be hunted by Bretonian knights, not because they fear their strength, but rather their intelligence. Soaring through the sky as a monstrous offensive disabler, the Cockatrice can use its petrifying gaze ability to slow enemies, bringing their charge to a crawl before dousing them with acidic vomit to apply heavy poison and striking with its mighty claws. But the standout unit is the Mutilith Vortex Beast. The Vortex Beast is an abomination that should not exist. A terrifying fusion of monster and magic, this creature has been mutated beyond any justifiable reason by the forces of chaos. It is trailed by a raw ball of chaos magic that is anchored to it, warping and twisting reality wherever it steps. The battlefield changes and mutates with every step it takes. As a monster of raw magical destruction, the Vortex Beast uses its aura of mutation passive hex to deal direct damage over time to anyone in the area surrounding it. With the Gift of Mutation ability, nearby friendly units gained increased offensive bonuses, and with the Tides of Transformation passive, the Vortex Beast can activate a Matter Explosion, a self-activated detonation that inflicts magical damage and severe knockback, with the survivors suffering from disorientation. The next faction getting a lord is Grand Cafe, led by Yuan Bo, the Jade Dragon. Ruling over the central provinces of Cathay, Yuan Bo, the Jade Dragon, leads the court of celestial sorcerers, a bureaucrat of the highest order on the surface, but a talented spy master at heart. The Jade Dragon runs the city of Weijin and, by extension, is an administrator for the Cathayan Empire and the Dragon Emperor's personal executioner. Liked by his siblings, the future of Grand Cathay is in his capable hands. Serving two roles between his human and dragon forms, the Jade Dragon can be a devastating single-target destroyer and a potent spellcaster with the Light, Yin, and Heaven lores of magic. Soar above the battlefield as a dragon, burning down even the strongest of enemies, or take the fight to the ground with game-changing spells at your side. As Yuan Bo, you're there to control the state, engage in a chess-like match unlike any other with the matters of state. As a master statesman, right hand to the emperor and spy master, Yuan Bo's influence over the kingdom runs deep. With this power, enact overt and covert policies across the settlements, armies, and even characters to best suit your empire's needs. Crack down on settlement corruption, rush construction to your entire empire in a single move, create diplomatic deadlocks to move through unfriendly territories, and much, much more. Or you can go beyond mere balance and embrace disharmony, leveraging it as an excuse to serve more severe and extreme actions to fit your agenda. Which is all to say, you and Bo doesn't follow the rules. He writes them. With a plan centuries in the making under the request of Yuan Bo's father, Yuan Bo's campaign is all about empowering the Great Jade Compass. The Jade Dragon is tasked with traveling to critical locations and constructing relays to empower the Jade Compass, before defending them from the Lizard Man incursions, destroy them, and plot a course to victory. For units in this DLC, Grand Cathay fields the new Jade Lion, a monstrous unit that recharges your winds of magic reserves in the heat of battle, pouncing and kicking Cathay's foes and unleashing flaming magical attacks. You'll also get the Jet Lion variant, a monstrous anti-magic unit that buffs allied spellcasters, causing enemy mages to miscast and turns enemy ranged units' missiles back on them. The Onyx Crowmen, winged servants of the Moon Empress that excel in flying melee combat, and the Celestial General, a new lord who thrives as an aggressive frontline leader, smashing through foes with a formidable warhammer. And finally, the Jengu Wardrum, which can either buff the melee attack of nearby combatants and make them immune to psychology or provide a defensive bonus. But when it comes to Kislev, the DLC gets much darker. 
Mother Ostankia, the daughter of a forest, is a vengeful crone that dwells in the ancient oblasts of Old Kislev and hunts forbidden hexes to grow her power. Her frail appearance conceals a being of terrifying arcane might who haunts the nightmares of Kislevite children and harnesses nature's wrath to create potent hexes and incantations. For mechanics, Mother Ostankia's quest is to collect forbidden hexes, the strongest of which is the evasive Malediction of Ruin. Slay those who guard them and collect trinkets from your defeated foes to combine in the Witch's Hut to create powerful incantations infused with ancient magic. For units, you'll get the Hag Witch, a fast-moving spell-casting legendary hero who rides a chariot into battle. The Elemental Incarnate of Beasts, a giant avatar of raw natural ferocity that channels the lore of beasts to terrify and brutalize your foes. The Things in the Woods, fast-moving beastly infantry killers who hunt best in the woodland. And Akshina Rangers, bearskin-clad skirmishers who can hide in plain sight and are most effective when fighting in forests. Total War traditionally included a free legendary lord with each new DLC, but in Warhammer 3 this has become a legendary hero. In this case, Akuld Hellbrass, a champion of Zinch who was pursued to the edge of the Chaos Waste and saved from the brink of death, who was given the unique mutation of everything he touches springs back into life. He's now a powerful melee hero that should get additional healing spells. There will be additional information about changes coming with Patch 4.0, including improvements to the campaign AI, garrisons, new landmarks for legacy factions, and expanded difficulty settings coming out in the future. And that is what is on offer for the Shadows of Change DLC. Whether or not what is on offer is worth $25 is going to be entirely down to you. So what do you think? If for some reason you do feel the need to pre-order early, I highly suggest a link in the description from fanatical.com as it typically offers an 18% and therefore the most extensive discount you can get before the game releases. But I strongly encourage you to wait to see the full DLC in action before you decide to purchase it or wait for it to go on sale. Because this is a case of I don't write the news, I just read it. And this has been Total War News. Thanks for watching.